Hello folks, this video is about logical truth or necessary truth. Your first task is to check out these seven sentences, decide which ones you think are logically true. So pause your videos now and evaluate all of these before going on. Okay, that's your last chance to pause your videos. What is the concept of logical truth? When we talk about logical truth, what we mean are sentences that have to be true. They can't possibly be false because of the logic of them, because of the structural facts about those sentences. Like, let's take this sentence, um, the first one, Pia is Pia. This is logical truth because every object has to be the same as itself. That's, that's what the word is mean. Or to put it another way, if we say Pia equals Pia, it's a fact about the logic of the identity relation. Everything is identical to itself. Um, so that's why that sentence can't be false. That's why any uh, sentence like that is a law of logic. Um, or consider this one down here, Pia likes movies or doesn't like movies. All of these sentences in blue are logical truths. You might say, this is how the word or works. Either Pia likes movies, or if she doesn't like movies, then it has to be the case that uh, she likes movies is false, and this has to be true then. So one way or the other, either she likes movies or she doesn't, that has to be true. So that's why that is a law of logic. Or again, think about the logic, the structure of if-then claims. Like, if Pia likes movies, then Pia likes movies. This is a bizarre thing to say, it's repetitive. It's sort of like circular reasoning, but it can't be false, it can't be wrong. Because if it is true that she likes movies, of course, then it is true that she likes movies. That's just repeating the same thing. So all of these examples um, in, in uh, blue here are logical truths. Now, as I'm going to use the word necessary truth in this class, um, I'm basically gonna mean the same thing as logical truth. Necessary truths are just sentences that can't possibly be false because of some reason or other. And logic is just one of those reasons. But you might, you might realize that not all necessary laws, not all the things that guarantee things are necessarily true, have to be logical reasons. Like we talk about there being laws in physics or laws in chemistry. We talk about laws in economics or any area of study. So if something has to be true in any of those domains, it would count as a necessary truth of physics or a necessary truth of chemistry. And it wouldn't therefore be a logical truth. But since we're not gonna talk about E equals MC squared here or any of these other laws of economics. So when I talk about necessary truths in this class, I really mean that to be synonymous with logical truths. I'll, I'll just use those two words interchangeably. I'm just giving you this uh, slide now to realize that in a broader context, you might think there are necessary truths that aren't just the logical ones, but we're just here concerned with logical laws. So whenever I talk about sentences that have to be true, they're necessarily true and couldn't be false, I'm gonna just mean by that the things that are, are logically true. Now, what is necessary contrast with? The opposite of necessary is contingent. So what I want you to do now is pause your videos, check out this same group of sentences and decide which of these are contingent sentences. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. The contingent sentences are not all the ones that weren't logical truths. Actually, um, contingent means something different than just not being a logical truth. Contingent means possibly true and possibly false. So which are the ones that are contingent? Well, Pia likes movies. Maybe it's true that Pia likes movies, but perhaps it could, the world could have been different and Pia didn't like movies. Maybe had she grown up differently, uh, her life could have gone in a different way and she would have not liked movies. Or consider this one. If Pia likes movies, then Raquel likes Pia. Now, that might be true if, if Raquel is a movie lover who loves everybody who loves movies. Then maybe the sentence is true. But that doesn't mean it's a law of logic that Raquel is like that. Um, so there's nothing about the structure of this that guarantees that this sentence is necessarily true. So both of those are contingent. But uh, here's what's going on. Something uh, is contingent if it's possibly true and possibly false. That doesn't mean just because you're not a logical truth, you have to be contingent. There's the other category of logical falsehood. So necessary sentences are ones that are always true or always false. When we talk about necessary truths, those are the things I mean by logical truths. But then there's the flip side, there's the necessary falsehoods. So when we talk about necessary falsities or logical falsities in this class, what we mean are sentences that are always false. Um, and here's an easy way to generate a logical falsehood. Just take a logical truth and negate it. Like we said that Pia is Pia, this is always true. So if we just say Pia isn't Pia, if we just put a negation through that identity symbol, we get something that's logically false. Or think about something else, some other relation that you know has to be false. Like 
nothing can be bigger than itself. This is, this is impossible. Just like um, uh, everything has to be the same as itself, uh, it's sort of similar. Nothing can be, two can't be bigger than two or two can't be smaller than two. That doesn't make sense. So this sentence is necessarily false. So that would count as a logical falsity in our sense. Now, you might be wondering, uh, are truths of mathematics always going, to be count, always going to count as logical truths? And that's actually a really tough question to answer. But what I will say is, there is a lot of mathematics which is actually facts about logic. So what we will say is, it's a fact about the less than relation. It's part of the logic of that relation is that it orders things and nothing has that relation to itself. Nothing can be less than itself. That doesn't, that's, that's logically incoherent. That's incoherent by the uh, logic of that relation. Just like every object is itself, it's a fact about the logic of this relation that every object is itself, and it's a fact about the logic of this relation that no object is less than itself. So necess necessity means always the case, but you can have necessary truth and necessary falsity. Contingent just means it's not always the case. So it means it could be true or it could be false. Now, just because something's contingent, we don't know whether it's true or false. That depends upon what the world is like. So whether something is actually true depends upon whether it's in the, which possibility is realized, whether it's possibly true or possibly false. Of course, logical truths are also actually true. So if you just know something is actually true, you don't know whether it's contingently true or necessarily true. You have to think about the logic of the sentence. Like, here's a, here's a contingent truth. Seattle is in Washington. Now that's a fact about the world, but that doesn't mean it has to be the case. You know, hundreds of years ago, it wasn't true that Seattle was in Washington. Seattle wasn't even uh, a city then. Washington wasn't even a state. Now, that might sound, it might sound weird to say Seattle's not in Washington in those cases because uh, Washington didn't exist. So it's not like Seattle was in some other state. But even, even if that is bothering you, it's not necessarily true that Seattle is in Washington. Uh, it's, just, it's just possibly true. You can let your imaginations run wild. When you're considering these possibilities, you can imagine any wacky way the world might have gone. If it's at least coherent, then, then that counts as a genuine possibility and the sentence is contingent. Like, let's say that Seattle decides to secede from Washington and we decide to make our own state and we call it Seattleton and now we're the 51st state in the country. Or maybe we make our own country. Seattle secedes from America and now it's its own country. Then Seattle would no longer be in Washington. Now, those are fanciful and ridiculous possibilities. But when you're talking about what's possible, anything that's logically coherent is allowed to be one of those possibilities. When you're trying to decide, is it possibly false that Seattle is in Washington? You get to let your mind run wild. But there are limits. You can't let your mind run so wild that two is no longer two anymore, or it, that two is less than itself. Those are incoherencies. So when we imagine all these possibilities, you have to think, does this really make sense or is it genuinely impossible? And when you run up against these laws of logic, then you're hitting something that is genuinely impossible. Now, logic is sometimes subtle, so it might not be easy to tell whether something is a genuine possibility or not. And that's one reason why um, formal logical systems are gonna be helpful. We're gonna create these models that actually help us decide whether certain things are truths of logic or not. Okay, so the point of this video is to help you understand two things. One is what the concept of logical truth means. And there we're gonna talk about that all the necessary truths because of logic, those are the logical truths. The other point of this video is to help you distinguish between things that are contingently true and things that are necessarily true. This is not a super easy distinction to keep in mind, but it's gonna be really critical to the rest of this course. So you need to keep practicing it and keep thinking about the examples like the ones we talked about in this video. Okay, thanks.